self-defense technique that you can defend yourself with in almost any situation. So we're gonna look at multiple types of self-defense techniques. And we're gonna talk about what's the best. What do you think's the best? I'm gonna give you my opinion and my experience. So what is the best technique for cane self-defense? The first one I'm gonna go over is the most simple and the most basic, which is just the thrusting motion. If I get behind my cane, that means I'm gonna point my cane at the threat and I just push through the middle of his body, I'm gonna create distance. In fact, that's one of the reasons why the walking cane is such a great self-defense tool. It gives you this reach advantage. Now, when I take it from this position, I simply turn my wrist up. I'm not doing anything else yet except for getting it into that other hand. And then I just drive through this part of his body anywhere from here to here, I'm gonna be able to immediately push him back or stop his advance. That's the first technique. So what is the best technique using the walking cane for self-defense? Is it the simple thrust? I can go into the groin simply, fast, quick, as explosively as you can, and it's that direct line, that closest distance between the two lines is that direct, or the closest distance is that straight line, right? That's the basic principle of the thrust. From here, the other reason the thrust is such a great option for self-defense using your walking cane is because you can put your whole body behind it and drive, knocking him, and I knocked it to the ground, so I'm gonna have to pick it up, but knocking him completely out of the fight. So you can stop someone quickly. Here's another reason why that thrust is so effective using your walking cane. Not only do you have your body behind it, so your body weight is driving through his middle, anywhere in the middle. You can go into the eyes, nose, throat, go right into the groin, right into the private parts, the part between the belly button and the private parts, that thin muscle sheath, that fascia. You can poke a hole in it, give him a hernia, but you're either way you're gonna drop him to the ground. So this thrust, is that the best technique for self-defense using your walking cane? But I want to also talk about other techniques that are equally as effective. One other point about the walking cane, and especially using one of these Cane Masters canes, this is a Cane Master Quantum Protector cane. They don't bleed. This one's in oak, you can get this in oak, or you get it in hickory. If you get it in hickory, it's a little heavier and it hits a whole lot harder. But either way, they're nearly indestructible when you keep them oiled up. So using the thrust, is that the best self-defense technique using your walking cane? Let's talk about the second kind of technique that I like to work with, which is this slashing strike, almost like using a sword or using a scream of sticks, collie sticks. I have all of these different angles of attack. So is this angle, angular strike, is that gonna be the most effective self-defense technique? Let me grab the bag real quick, I'll be right back. I just knocked it over with the thrust. That was the first one. The second technique, this angular strike. Using this cane, I can come in with the, from the shoulder and I keep it in front of me the whole time. The threat's here by simply bringing my hand down quickly, turning my shoulders, my hips, stomach up and in. I generate massive amounts of force in the target here. Temple, eyes, nose, jaw. The, the neck, I can hit that neck, knock him unconscious. I can hit the head, knock him unconscious. So is that strike, these angular strikes either coming down or coming up from the hip into his ribs, into his elbow, into the side of his face, or coming straight across and back, coming this way, turning again. When you turn your body and you step into it a little bit, you're gonna create a lot of force. Those are the best techniques. Is that the most effective technique for self-defense using your walking cane? What about coming straight down on top? And it's not like this, it's from the shoulder straight in. Think about cracking them right through the middle of the forehead for self-defense. Which technique is best for your walking cane using it for self-defense? Is it this swinging, flashing, chopping style of strike. And again, you have angles coming down, angles coming up. You have the angles or the uh, horizontal strikes and you can go to the head, you can go to the ribs, you can go down into the thigh, you can buckle the knee, all with those basic slashing strikes with one hand. Now let's go back to the very first one. Is it the thrust 
Remember I said you could be here, get it to here. This is so fast. I want you to practice this. If you're doing cane self-defense at all, just practice. Pop it into that hand. Get it into that hand. Boom. Go right into his private. Right into his belly button. Right into his uh, solar plexus. Right through his throat for self-defense. Right into his face. That's number one. Is that the best technique? Using your cane for self-defense? Or is it these slashing strikes? Either with the long side, the shaft, or that big old knuckle, that big hammer. Look at that. That thing. That thing has a lot of weight. You can hear it. It's hard, hitting harder. When I use this side, you can turn it around, reach in there, and rip something off. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. But you can strike with either side of that crook. And it's just like the shillelagh, the Irish shillelagh, where you have that extra tight, strong uh, knuckle, extra weights here. This is almost, when, you, when you're holding it this way, this becomes a weighted lever or a levered, levered weight where all the weight is at the end. And so when you swing into it, kind of like an ax, like a hammer, like a war hammer, that's your war hammer for self-defense. So is that the most effective self-defense strike using your walking cane for self-defense? Number one, thrust. Number two, these angular strikes. Number three is this two-handed pushing motion getting two hands on it. From here, you just bring it up and over. Now, I can blast in through his teeth, his nose, his eyes. And I saw the comment that you should get your dad to watch this. True story, about 20 minutes ago, a gentleman comes in, he's 74 years old. We're talking about, he's talking about his grandkids, maybe come do some training. And then he said, well, I wanna do some things. And I said, you should do some things. He said, well, I don't know, I'm not as, as strong as I used to be. I've got aches and pains. And I said, well, you know, I can teach you how to use the walking cane. And he kind of chuckled and laughed. He said, I don't know about that. And I handed it to him. I handed him this Cane Masters self quantum self-defense cane. I handed this to him. And he took it in his hand. A smile came up and he said, that would work. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you can feel immediately. He said, it's obvious. It's got so much power. And, I, and then I showed him a couple techniques. I said, you get it in that hand, you go through the middle. He said, I got to learn this stuff. So you're right, show this to people who could benefit from this. They will benefit. And if you're on here, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I appreciate all of you. Thank you for being here. Now, the next one, I'm up. This is one of my favorites. If somebody sticks his hands on you, you're gonna take your cane, just simply lift it up and bring it down between you and the threat. His hands are on you already. So you're just going to pull it right to your chest. When you pull that to your chest, his arms are gonna buckle. The nerves that are on the top of the arm are not going to be able to stop. Or if he doesn't feel it, because some people's nerves don't work the same way. Just a few people. And I appreciate all of you hitting that like button. Thank you so much. But when you pull that down, if he doesn't, you'll break his bone. This here, this cane, this Cane Masters Quantum Protect Yourself Fence Cane in oak or in hickory. You can get this in hickory for like six bucks more. When you pull that straight down, that's going to break. It's that simple. You pull it in here, bam, and you go right in through the face for self-defense or the throat or the chest. And thank you for all your compliments right now. You bring it in, bam, and you blast it straight through the face, straight through the middle. We're going to talk about what are the best targets to strike, and that's going to tie in. That's going to help answer this question. But what we're talking about first is what's the best technique? Quick review. Number one, is it the thrust? That's the fastest, I think. From here, i like you to practice this. In fact, if you want to learn one technique for self-defense using your walking cane, start with your weight on it, turn it into the hand. And don't worry about coming up here, especially if your shoulders aren't as strong as they used to be. When you put it here, in this position, almost everybody's very strong. Then step, that's all you have to do. From here, boom. And he's looking here, he's screaming and yelling in your face. He's got the hand, he's trying to hit you, stab you, grab you, punch you, scream at you, throw something at you, and you just bring it right in. He's paying attention here, you're gonna look right in his eyes, and you're gonna drive it through his soul. But you're gonna hit the lower part of his soul, between that belly button and the private parts, anywhere in there, doesn't matter. This is all soft tissue. That soft tissue is just going to go into a quick spasm where he does this and he can't catch his breath and he feels like he's dying. And the whole time you said, look, I will defend myself. Get out of my face. 
That's, yeah, right in the bread basket. Thank you. Second one, he's striking, slashing techniques. Coming up, coming down, through the head, through the ribs, breaking the joints. Strike those joints for self-defense. Go down into the legs. Take the legs out from under him. Again, he's up here, he's looking. Maybe you don't want to break his skull. Maybe you just need to strike his knee or strike his thigh. Hit that sciatic nerve. I don't know if you've ever had sciatic pain. You hit that hard enough, you will break the bone. But if short of breaking the bone, you're going to put that sciatic nerve into great pain. And it's a sympathetic nerve. I mean, it goes from one side to the other one. Hello, Peter. It's good to see you. Peter said he just got back from the firing range. Uh, one side or the other, it's going to buckle him to the ground. Now, the third one, I said they put their hands on you. Pull it in. Push them off. There, I want you to add a technique. From this, I want you to go into boxing his head. Punching with the cane. Right, left, right, 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 right. That's from Bo. That's from the Japanese long staff. You, if you train with me with any of the staff, we've done this since the beginning of time using your martial arts staff. It's the same thing. This is just, you cut that off. That's a martial arts staff. That's the Hanbo. That's the short one. Right? You just come through the middle, striking here, maybe go down into those legs. Whoo, bam! There's that thrust again. Which one of those techniques is best to learn for self defense? Using your walking cane. Walking cane self defense training revolves around simple, basic techniques. You could start to do this and this. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. That just came from a conversation I had with one of my clients yesterday. We were watching another thing, and he said, tell me what you think about this. And the instructor was saying, you just got to get a little dancey fancy. You got to spin it through. And I'm not against that. I think that kind of combat cane spinning is very valuable. Do your combat cane spinning. Use the footwork. Improve your cardio back. But the gentleman I was working with, 70, mid 70s. And he's like, my body doesn't do that. How long do I have to wait before I can defend myself? Because I learned how to, how to be like a Sprite. And I said, no, don't do that. I said, you stand like this. You tell him back up, buddy. Boom. Or hey, you're too close. Or get your hands off of me. That's what I'd like you to work on, right? Keeping it simple. Let's get the fancy stuff out. We'll do those later on the martial arts side of things. This is self-defense. They're not the same thing. All right, I have another technique for you. I'm gonna turn it around this way and I'm gonna bring it up. Hello, David, it's good to see you. I'm gonna slide it up in my hand like this. By the way, combat cane spinning is very good. It's very important to cross train the body to condition the hands, get that callus, get that callus so this stuff sl uh, slides through your hands. It slides through, slides through. Helps you with timing and distance. Improves your cardiovascular fitness, it leans you out. Lots of value there, lots of great value, even the dancey fancy stuff. But understand once, it's like boxers jump rope. You jump the rope, skip the rope, don't jump it. But you skip, you work on your footwork, Condition the heart and the lungs, you condition the legs, that gets you ready for the fight. But you're not gonna take the jump rope into the ring when a guy's trying to knock your teeth down your throat. You're gonna get them up. You're gonna bob and weave, stick and move. And in the case of the cane, we're not bobbing and weaving. We're just sticking right here, and he's gonna move. We're gonna knock him to the ground. So from here, crook is facing out, I'll pop it up. Get in my hand and say, you're too close to me. You don't have to like me, but you can't touch me. You can't talk to me like that. You don't have to believe in the things I believe, but you have no right to try to shut me up and get in my face and intimidate me and try to steal my life or my dignity. You have that right. That's your human right. That comes from God. No government gives you that. So from here, you pop it up. Get out of my face, thug. You're going to take this thing here, that big old tooth on this cane master's quantum self-protector cane. It's like a, it's, this is like your bodyguard. This is almost like an extra life insurance policy. Or this is like a health insurance policy for your health, for your better health. You carry down the street. The guy's getting too close. You pop it up. You reach out 
and you see that, you put that right here. You put that right here. You put that right here. You put it here, here, anywhere you go. And Singe Man, I saw your comment about someone taking your cane from you or taking your stick. We can talk about that. We'll talk about that at the end of this video. From here, I'm gonna reach out and rake, rake, reach straight in. Stick that back here, pull him to the ground. Get that in the back of his neck. Stick that into his ear hole and through his ear hole, rip it for self-defense. It's very effective. You don't have to be stronger than he is. This is gonna do the work, right? That's gonna do the work. And that's all you really need in order to do the work of self-defense. So is that the most effective technique using your walking cane for self-defense? The crook with the rip and the slide and the tear and the rip. So let's review real quick. Number one is the thrust. My personal favorite because it's the fastest. From here, it's straight in. He catches me off guard. I can even, as I'm picking it up, try to go through his groin and lift him off the ground a little bit. Maybe I miss his groin and I hit his chin and knock his head back. Maybe I get my hand there and I just walk through his body. I step through this, this, this hole, right? You create a hole, like a tunnel. You're gonna walk right through his soul to the other side. You told him you're getting too close. And you know what it is? Most people, we, we say this in self-defense, fight or flight. You've heard that, fight, 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 fight. You're either gonna fight or flight. In active shooting situation, I've been studying this a lot because I'm getting ready to do some videos on this, do some training for some schools. Active shooting situations, they say you have to Run, hide, or fight. Run, hide, or fight. The real reality is most people, if they haven't been trained, will not fight, will not fight. They will freeze and not hide. They just freeze. With that look, the deer in the, you know, the headlights, right? Thank you. I appreciate you guys uh, joining. I appreciate all your support. If you haven't already, please give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you don't like my, my, the words that are coming out of me, right? You don't like it. It doesn't, it doesn't resonate with you. You think I'm overdoing it. That's fine. Put it in there. Put comments in there. Share. Say, hey, look what this guy's saying. He's saying that you have every right to defend yourself. That's not true. You need to wait. You need to call 911 and hope that they get there in time. Right? If you believe if that's, give me the thumbs down. If not, if you want to defend yourself, thumbs up. Bring it up. That's number one. Number two is a throw, or a, is a, these strikes, right? The angles, slashing strikes up, down. Number three, the thrust. Number four, the crook. Which one do you think is the most effective technique for self-defense? Using your walking cane for self-defense. So the self-defense walking cane, we have thrusting, slashing, pushing or shoving, and then crooking. I don't know what else to call it. Ripping. Let's call that a rip. We'll call it ripping, right? Yeah, the crook. The crook or the hook. I call it here called uh, both things. All right. All right, right, Shannon, thank you for that, for saying that you, know, you have to practice these techniques. Now, let me address that real quick. Let's say this is your first time, you're 76 years old. My average Kane Selfman student is in his or her 60s, or 70s, I'm sorry, 70s. I have some as young as late 60s and some as old as, or young as late 80s. But everybody's in that range, and all of us have the same situation when we start to age. Now, I'm not in my 70s, but what I'm saying, my <laughs> joints hurt a little bit. I don't move as fast as I used to. I don't have the same kind of flexibility that I used, once had, but I've seen it with my own eyes. When you start to train, you will make improvement from where you are and you'll move forward. You'll start to move in the direction you want to get. And most of your body, your aging-related issues, are not due to age, it's due to lifestyle. You become sedentary for a long time. I'm not blaming you, I'm just saying that's the reality. We've all been watching TV, working for seven, eight hours a day, driving to and from work a couple hours, sleeping six, seven, eight, nine hours a night, and no one's moving like they used to. When you were 18, 19, when you were a 15 year old kid, when you were seven, everywhere you went, you had to walk or run. You didn't have a car, you had a bicycle. That's what happens, that's not age, that's lifestyle. So don't blame everything on age. Age is a real issue. There's a lot of stuff there. Clean up your diet. Start to move. 
Exercise your legs. Use your cane to take the weight off and do these small pulsing squats. Get those exercise bands, put them over there and do standing push-ups. You're gonna see that very shortly your whole body's gonna start to change. So that's the first thing I have to say. The second thing, this is your first day, learn how to do this. If nothing else, this. It's as simple as turn your wrist. Turn your wrist, turn your wrist, and it's like pointing your, your nose picker, your pointer finger. Point your pointer finger at his body. That's the first motion. That's motion one. At the same time, put the other hand on top. Practice this. You don't have to move like I move, but do this. You can do this and then step. Do this and step. And see if a big uh, thug bully creeper can walk through your cane. He can't. Your body weight is behind it. You don't have to be fast and strong like you used to. From here, you do a little tiny step and you drive through his body. And that's gonna work for you, even if you're just a beginner. And then learn these other things as you get better and better and better. They're all gonna kind of fall or come together and you're gonna see yourself change. And you're gonna feel yourself grow and your confidence is gonna grow, your self-esteem is gonna grow, all related to the ability to defend yourself, even if you're 87. And I say 87 because I sent a cane to a gentleman who's 87 years old last week who follows these same videos and is training with us all the time. So I know, I know that, you know, I know it works. I've seen it over and over here in person and all the comments that you send me and the videos you send me, I see it over and over. I believe I'm a believer, right? I drank my own Kool-Aid because I've seen that everybody else who's drinking it, they're making progress. I see you making progress. Now, Let's answer the question, which technique is best for self-defense using your walking cane for self-defense? David, it's my pleasure. David said, thanks for uh, my time and knowledge. I enjoy this. So I and I get as much out of it as you do when you guys give me comments and feedback. I'm learning from you as much as you're learning from me. And I'm changing. I'm changing constantly because I'm taking all of the extra fluff and throwing it away. I don't care about all this extra stuff. I'm not doing it for martial arts. I'm doing it for self-defense, and I want it to work for you. I don't want it to be some theory, right? That doesn't, if, it, if it just looks good because the guy that you're working with is feeding you the right technique, that's not good enough. It's got to work on the street. It's got to work for self-defense for real. If you come home at night and you've got the keys trying to get into your condo or your apartment or your house or the hotel, and some guy comes up and he's on top of you, and all you have is your cane, and you're in a closed combat situation, close combat, I want you to be able to strike and strike and keep striking and keep moving and be able to walk out of there. I want it to work. It's got to work for you. No matter where we are, confined quarters out in the middle of the street. All right, how do we answer this question? Which technique is best using the walking cane for self-defense? And the answer has to come down, and it's not my stuff. It's Tim Larkin. Some of you, I know you've been following Tim Larkin. And I've been talking about him a lot on this channel. Tim Larkin, who wrote the book, um, When Violence is the Answer. When Violence is the Answer. Thank you, Sensei Emmett. You know it. My brain gets frozen. He popped that in there so I wouldn't have to think about it too long. When Violence is the Answer says target-focused training. Target-focused training. Target-focused training, Tim Larkin. When Violence is the Answer means what are you going to hit to remove or destroy his ability to see, think, breathe temporarily, permanently, his ability to grab, stab, punch, push, slap, smash you with a big chunk of concrete, hit you with a frozen water bottle, hit you with his cane, because sometimes the, the, the thugs do that. Not that they need it, they just pick up somebody else's. How can you defend yourself? The answer is, you're going to ask yourself that simple question with a breath. Now, the reason I want to throw that breath in there, and I know he talks about it sometimes too, is the breath calms. Now, you need to learn how to calm down, not, not slow down. In a fighting situation, you gotta move fast. As fast as you can, as hard as you can. And that's always gonna be relative. And you'll be fast enough if you take that clearing, calming breath. It's not gonna get rid of all your fear and anxiety. You don't want it to. You wanna take that fear and anxiety, and this is back to what I was gonna say about fight, flight, or freeze. Most people freeze because they haven't put this light switch in there. They haven't anchored a trigger. You're gonna anchor a trigger in your head through practice. And the trigger is this, when you're feeling fearful, when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're feeling anxious because this guy is coming at you, invading your space, saying things, 
threatening. You're going to let that switch be thrown. You're going to flip it yourself and you're going to think, how dare you, right? You're going to go from, I can't believe this is happening to how dare you? How dare you talk to me like that? How dare you? There was that woman in San Francisco, Asian woman, Chinese woman, Chinese American woman. She was in San Francisco in her 60s, minding her own business, walking down the street. One of these revolving door, and I'm going to say it, it's all politics, but it's a revolving door thug, a homeless, um, mentally ill man who should have been incarcerated and away from the public because he hurts people. But because of no cash bail in San Francisco, this guy goes in and he comes out. He hurts somebody, goes to jail, he gets out the same day. That, and that's factual. Look it up, right? Google it. <laughs> if, if they'll let the facts come out. Anyway, that's all I'll say about that. This woman is attacked physically, smashed against the side of her head by this homeless man. She flips that switch and she says, how dare you? And she picks up a stick from the, the, her surroundings. She picks up a stick and she proceeds to teach him a lesson in self-defense, saying, you need to respect your elders. You need to not hurt people. What's wrong with you? And I'm not advocating violence at all, except in the case of defending yourself from violence. So you will use violence to stop violence being perpetrated against yourself. And that's the whole point here. So the question is, what self-defense technique, what take, or so, Kane self-defense technique is best? And it's the one that answers the question, what can you remove or destroy? And it's going to always change. But you, have, you realize situation awareness is always number one. You're paying attention. You get yourself in a better position and you say, Back up, you're too close. And in your mind, you take that breath. Okay, this guy, if he comes any closer, what will I remove or destroy? If it's his uh, ability to be awake, you might go straight down. If it's his uh, ability to come closer to you, his ability to stand upright, maybe catch his breath, maybe you thrust through his solar plexus. Or if you see him going for some kind of weapon, you're afraid, fearful for your life. Maybe it's his throat, his ability to be alive on this mortal plane with the rest of us, right? Or right through his face, his ability to see you. Or if he it seems like he's maybe had too much to drink or maybe he has that mental illness, but he's still a threat. You've got your grandkids with you. You have your significant other and you're saying, hey, buddy, back up. And you, he's got, he's looking at your, your granddaughter. Maybe it's taking out that knee. Or you have to go, head knee. But then you take that shot for self-defense. You go for what you can remove or destroy. So which technique is best? Is it thrusting? Is it these slashing strikes? Is it the shoving with the boxing strikes? Or are you going to turn it around and rip something straight off their body with that big nasty tooth? On this cane master's cane by the way if you want to see what these look like that's the first link below but you have to answer the question for you and it's always going to change maybe you're sitting on the bus on the park bench you're sitting talking to your significant other or your grandkids or your own children and this guy comes out of nowhere all of a sudden he's too close hey man give me some money give me some money that happens I, those are the words that are used sometimes and sometimes you say I'm not going to help you. And maybe you have a little extra confidence because you're sitting here like this. Or you're like, hey, you're getting too close. Or, you know what, you're getting too, you need to back up. Or, you know, don't step any closer. You don't have any right to demand from me. I will not help you. You don't say I don't have any money. Don't do that anymore. Don't say I, have, I don't have any change. Just say I will not help you. Make it very clear, very direct, if that's your intention. You want to help? Help. I have blessing bags that I carry with me now for the homeless, and I'm giving at least one out a week. That's my goal. I'm looking for them now, trying to be helpful. Put a couple dollars in there if I think it's going to be impactful, if I think it's going to help, and if I have it, right? But that's a personal choice. That could be your personal choice. But when they cross that line, you, 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 you know you mean it. You flip that switch. You go from, I can't believe this is happening to me, to how dare you? How dare you? You have no right to threaten me that way. You have no right. No one does. No one has any right to threaten you 
because of the way you look or how you dress or what you believe in or who you are or this color of your skin or uh, your gender or the way you, anything. No right. I don't care what it is. This is the freedom of being a human being. That's your human right. They have no right to do that. So flip that switch. And I'm not saying get in a fight, fighting posture like you want to fight everybody. I'm just saying that when it becomes a real life or death situation or life or harm or dignity, stealing your dignity and you get in this position with your cane, then the answer to that question, which technique for self-defense is best using your walking cane for self-defense? The answer is, what are your targets? Are you sitting? Are you standing? Where you walk and you got knocked to the ground and now you're on the ground lying on your back. Maybe it, in that case, it's his groin because it, or his privates. It's a different situation. Or maybe you turn it around and you swing that big hammer right into his ankles and crush those ankle bones, put them on the ground for self-defense. Maybe you reach out and you hook them and you pull them off of balance. It's always going to change. So what's the, rest, the right technique? What's the best technique for self-defense using walking cane? It depends on the first question, which is what targets you're going to remove or destroy. And that's going to tell you the answer, which technique you're going to use. And it's as simple as that. And it, always, always, always practice all the techniques that you know and that you can. And then visualize in your head, all right, my target are his nose with a thrust. And then tell yourself, nose, nose. And visualize when you strike the nose, how he's going to move back. Or, okay, I'm going to remove his ability to see, right? And I'm here in this position. And in my head, I think, eyes. And I, and I picture this going in and the eye popping out and hanging by a string as the nose rips half off his face for self-defense. But that's what this is. You have to give yourself these mental triggers, these mental pictures, so that you don't freeze. It's fight flight or freeze. Most people will freeze because they don't want to, they don't even want to deal with it. And so they never get the training where they put it off and they put it off. Once you get past freeze, you flip the switch and you say, okay, I can't run. I'm not going to outrun these three thugs, right? Because maybe you're using your cane for mobility. Maybe you sit in a wheelchair and you had your cane with you for self-defense and for the occasional time that you can get up and walk a few steps and then you have to sit back down. And, and that's your reality. And so you're carrying your cane. So you practice with that in mind. How are you going to use it? What techniques? You're going to use these awesome Irish stick fighting techniques. One of my favorite combinations. Pop them, pop them, drop them. Real simple, real fast, but with intent. Practice always with intent. All those are just the basics, right? But keep it simple. You don't need more than the basics. Get... Become a master of the basics. Then go out and explore all of the other fancy things and how you can bring it under your shoulder and around. I can't do that that well. <laughs> I was going to do it, and then I thought, I'll probably hit the camera and we'll have to end it too, too soon. Anyway, it's been my pleasure. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for all the thumbs up. Thank you. Please share this. I need, right now, July has been brutal. <laughs> it's been a weird, funny, brutal thing. I'm not complaining either. It's just every time I ask for your help, you guys help me out. All I really need is for you to either go to Pasquinelli.com and go around on that site or share these videos. Send them to people. Upload them to Facebook. They're starting to become more and more Facebook groups for the cane. Seek some of those out or maybe you belong to some of those. Please share those if you can. I'll see you guys in just a little bit. Oh, I'm going to do uh, bow combat. I wanted to talk about how to fight like that guy from The Walking Dead. What's his name? Who knows, Walking Dead. The guy, he, he's, he's all namaste, and he's Aikido peaceful, and he learns, the, um, he learns the Aikido bow staff, which doesn't exist, but it's Morgan. We're gonna do Morgan, how to fight like Morgan from The Walking Dead in the next video, which hopefully is in about 20 minutes. I'll see you guys in just a little bit. Thank you.